Welcome to this node breakdown for Mardini 2024 with Grayscale Gorilla. This is day three, and today's node is the Scatter and Align node. Again, the Scatter and Align node is a SOP level geometry node, so we can go ahead and drop a Scatter and Align node, not to be confused with a Scatter node. A scatter node is just a basic point scatter like this, but the scatter and align gives us things like scale attributes and transformation attributes. So we're going to go ahead and use the scatter and align, plug it in over here. So what you'll see is just a bunch of points. That's because the scatter and align node works with either instancing nodes or copy to points. So what we can do is just use a copy to points node right over here, right? So copy to points. Into the second input, we'll take our points to copy to, and into the first input, we'll take a geometry. So over here, I just have some axes, and I'm going to be copying them to each of these points so that we can see how our orientations work. Over here, you'll see that it just copies these to our grid. How do we know how many copies we have? Well, that's going to be dependent on this coverage over here and our scaling over here. So our coverage is going to be half coverage. If we push this up to one, that's going to be full coverage. So how this is calculated? is that it takes a uniform radius around each point that we're creating, and it figures out how close another point can be to it based on that scale. If we change the point count method, we can do a particular number of points, and they'll get scaled down so that no matter what number of points we choose over here, they'll fit into this grid. You can see that if we choose less, we'll get bigger points, and if we choose more, we'll get smaller points, right? We can also do by density. By density is going to work very similarly. So as we push up the density, we'll get more points, but they'll be smaller. So for now, we'll use by size. Now, an interesting thing that you can do over here under scale is that you can decrease the minimum radius. What this will allow is differences in the scale. The scale is going to be picked up by a scaling attribute that this outputs called P scale. P scale over here, as you can see, is an attribute created by the scatter and align node, along with things like the orient and normal attribute. Between the normal attribute, the orient attribute, and the p scale attribute, it defines how to copy a geometry to points. So we already know that p scale is going to be adjusted by this scale over here, where we have minimum radius and maximum radius, but we also have some settings down here for rotations. So if we open up the alignment, you can see that the normal direction, so the normal direction of the grid, is going to align to the y axis. So when we copy our geometry to these points, the y axis of our geometry is going to point along the normal direction. What does this mean? It means that if we have something like a sphere, the y axis is always going to be pointing away from the surface. You can see that if we change this alignment to something else like x, then x points away, or z, and z points away. Now we can also vary that so that they don't point straight up. And for that, we can use this max random cone angle. And as you can see, it randomly adjusts where the y-axis is pointing. This is the equivalent of having a bunch of cones that can define the angle in which we can move, right? So we can choose a narrower angle or a wider angle, right? So that's the idea over there. And then the last thing that we're going to look at is rotation around the normal. So around the y-axis, right? So if we choose a max angle, it can rotate around like that. But if you want maximum variation, you can do a minimum angle of negative 180 and a max angle of positive 180, and they will be perfectly randomized. You can also adjust them using the offset angle, and this offset angle can also be animated. One last thing to show you is just an efficiency thing, because sometimes if you want to copy proper geometries to points, so let's just go ahead and say a rubber toy over here, you'll see that it already starts to get slow. If we had to say increase this, so we were to increase our coverage or allow there to be some variation in scaling, it will slow down very rapidly. You can see that we already have close to a million points and this is going to slow down quite a lot. So instead of doing that, what we can do is just use this as a visualizer and you can even see the scale if you press D, go to geometry and view this as lit spheres. This is going to be the scale for each one of the points. You can just put that into a null as well as the geometry that you'd like to copy to those points. And you can combo this node up with the instancer node. So at the stage level, you'll just import your geometry, use the instancer node, select an external SOP, choose your instancing points, and then just plug this into second input, and it will copy to these points. And this is extremely efficient because this is instanced. So even if we have to really push up the number of points we have, it'll work really well. So that's a great combo to have. We can use our instancer with our scatter and align, or we can use 
a copy to point. Last thing is that we can choose coverage by an attribute and we can paint an attribute onto our geometry so that we only have points appearing in a certain area. That's going to be using the attribute paint node and so you can do that by hand as well and just end up with just a localized area of scattering. So I hope that this helped you. We'll be back tomorrow with the layout lop. So we'll be looking at stage level nodes for the following week. So thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.